business organizations, corporate formation, incorporation and organizing a US corporation. A corporation is formed when a state grants a charter for the company to operate as a corporation. In exchange, the state attracts business activity, charges a filing fee and annual franchise tax. Incorporation is administered by the Secretary of State. State law governs the operation and internal affairs of the corporation itself. For example, Delaware law is used to settle disputes among directors, shareholders and officers in a Delaware corporation, regardless of whether the corporation is headquartered or located in another state. Delaware remains the dominant state of incorporation in the United States for several reasons. The statute is very friendly to corporations, their managers and investors. The corporate law is well defined and understood. With a large body of law, Delaware case law is well established. Delaware courts have developed specialist expertise in corporate matters. And the Delaware corporate law is very stable and predictable. The Delaware Constitution actually prevents radical changes in corporate law. Forming a corporation is relatively easy and involves merely filing the articles or certificate of incorporation with the Secretary of State. This is often a simple one-page document containing the name of the corporation with the letters INC or corporation affixed, the address of the registered office or the office of the agent for service of process within the state, the stock issued to shareholders, identifying different classes of stock if appropriate. The document must be signed by the incorporator, anyone above the age of 21. The makeup of the board of directors can be defined in the articles or separately in the bylaws. Once this document is filed with the Secretary of State, the corporation is formed. The Secretary of State often provides a receipt to acknowledge the incorporation is effective. What happens if the articles were not filed effectively with the Secretary of State? For example, if the certificate was incomplete or misfiled? Well, strictly speaking, the corporation doesn't exist. The creditors can claim the business was a partnership and hold the owners personally liable for the company's debts. A de facto corporation is actually held to exist and limited liability is extended to the owners if there was one substantial compliance with the process of formation. The filing was almost complete and two the owners acted in good faith and were unaware of the defects in the filing and three, the business acted like a corporation, followed corporate formalities, appointed a board of directors, etc. Estoppel is another theory for barring the creditor's attempts to hold the owners of a defectively formed corporation personally liable. If the creditor contracted with the company, believing it to be a corporation, the creditor is barred from later claiming it to be a partnership. The privilege of limited liability for owners is not destroyed by missing signatures, incomplete forms or other defects in the incorporation process. A corporation generally is not responsible for debts and obligations incurred before it was formed. A company founder incurring debts before the act of incorporation is known as a promoter and is personally liable for the debts and obligations negotiated before the corporation was created. Promoter scenarios usually involve a prospective founder meeting potential suppliers and presenting them with a story along the lines of I want to hire you to work for my corporation. The company is not yet incorporated but will soon be incorporated. The promoter in these situations is acting as an agent for a non-existent principal. Of course, after incorporation, the company can resolve to adopt the contract as its own. 
but the promoter remains liable to the third party as well. Liability is joint and several. If the corporation is unable to pay, the third party supplier can demand payment for the full amount from the promoter. The corporation alone is unable to agree to take over the contract and relieve the promoter of liability. The third party supplier entered the agreement with the promoter and the third party must also agree to relieve the promoter of liability. Promoter's liability means entrepreneurs are best advised to incorporate as soon as they start to engage with any third party suppliers or service providers. Otherwise, they're acting as promoters and are held personally liable even after the company is formed. Just as a corporation is created by the state, it's also dissolved by the state. Voluntary dissolution requires consent of the shareholders and approval of the board of directors. Involuntary dissolution can be mandated by the court to resolve a shareholder dispute. The process of dissolution involves liquidation of the corporation's assets and distribution of the net proceeds to the shareholders. An application for dissolution is filed and check made out to the Secretary of State. The state then undertakes a dissolution report and final accounting, essentially to confirm all the state franchise taxes have been paid. When these and other requirements are met, the state issues a certificate of dissolution.